order to require in, in order to require the four points and, and, and no no less than four. Um, if one of those locations sort of becomes not viable, it it could potentially um, place the entire framework at risk um, because uh, if, if there's no longer if it's no longer profitable to operate one or two of those locations, and maybe is maybe that Minneapolis location, for example, is it places the entire system at risk for the limited people that we've included in the bill. And so how, how is the commissioner, because I don't see the latitude within Section 9 particularly, the, the commissioner going to be able to, uh, with that geographic mandate particularly, um, how is the commissioner going to make sure that each one of these locations is actually viable? Well, um, it's, a, it's a great question, uh, Senator Peterson, and I and I really appreciate the the inquiry. Um, it's you know we're trying to uh, strike a balance, of course. Um, I think uh, um, you know the, the Senate original Senate position was forty five. Now twenty. It was a great bill, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, and so so we're trying to strike that that balance. You know, because of course, um, if this language were were softer, then you know it's conceivable that we would have two. Um, which, which would be um, uh, you know, also equally uh, unacceptable. Um, so I think um, we really do try to, um, we're trying to strike that equilibrium where um, we create some expectations you know, for public access uh, to, to something that might uh, be a benefit to them if they're, if they're suffering without creating barriers of a geographic nature. Um, and then also, you know, kind of leaving it um, to the, uh, to the manufacturers to and, and distributors, manufacturers slash distributors to kind of figure out how to make it work. Um, so, you know, your your answer is somewhat. Uh, your question is somewhat unanswerable, answerable at this point. But um, you know, it's, it's a it's a struggle to try to figure out that equilibrium, that balance, give people access, um, remove as, as many barriers as we can, um, and see if the uh, Free market um, can't operate within, you know, what is, you know, a, a pretty, <coughs> not, I wouldn't say rigid, but pretty set set of criteria and expectations. So, just Thank trying you to just check the balance. It may not be perfect, but those are good questions. Good response. Great. Anything further, <coughs> members? This is Senator Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and this doesn't pertain to the bill, so if you'd like me a little bit. Uh, one of the biggest uh, caveats that I had um, was that uh, we changed the name and referred to it as cannabis. And I want to thank everybody for that. I'm helping a young man who's addicted to heroin and uh, giving him the necessary treatment. Um, what I'd like to bring up is uh, walking in here today, uh, the television outside, Capitol TV, still refers to it as marijuana. And so I'd just like to uh, stress the importance and the reason why I think uh, they should be using it the terminology as cannabis as well. And just uh, stress how frustrated I was in reading that. Thanks, uh, thank you. It takes practice. I was, using, I was using the terms interchangeably for a while at the start of the presentation of this bill at the beginning of the session, but it takes, it takes practice and discipline because we are, because the, the other term marijuana is distracting and gets people thinking about things that we don't want to thinking about in this context. Thank you. Um, so why don't we go to uh, public testimony. We have Commissioner L. Oh, sorry. Just, sorry, Mr. Sorry. Chair. Just one more question. And, um, so I'm, lo I'm looking at Section 21 now in particular. One of the things I really liked about <coughs> the Senate bill, your bill, Mr. Chair, is, is no fiscal room, um, or, or zero cost, I should say. Um, this is a 2.795 uh, appropriation uh, in fiscal year 2015 for medical cannabis research. And I'm curious, um, Mr. Chair, for any of the members or staff, what are we going to glean from that research that sort of already isn't known about cannabis, given the fact that it's sort of been around for thousands of years and used and legalized in multiple states and what do we what are the unanswered questions sort of around medical cannabis well it's a it's an excellent segue to call up our first testifier the commissioner of health 
Um, I'll just take a stab at it, but I'll invite uh, Commissioner Ellinger to the to the table to provide his prepared testimony, and maybe you can touch on. I, I suspect your your testimony is going to touch on a response to uh, Senator Peterson's question. Um, uh, you know the uh, you know you don't you don't know what you don't know, um, but we do know that um, at least five thousand, and you know hopefully maybe more over over time, uh, people um, uh, are going to have. Their use of medical cannabis, the types, the doses, uh, connected to their conditions and their demographic, and you know other particular information is all going to be connected with then what's going on with them over a, you know a fairly long period of time. All of that data is going to be collected and compiled, and uh, the commissioner is is directed to create some some research study and some analysis. At a minimum, it's going to be a pretty enormous data set that a lot of researchers can go to and find out a lot more. I don't think um, at any point along the way that we were presenting on the Senate side um, that proposal, um, there was any dispute with the argument that we need more information. That's clear. You know, more specific information about uh, what types of cannabis and what forms uh, have most uh, effect on what conditions. And, and the more information, the better. This is going to be a tremendous opportunity to collect a lot of data. So that's my stab at it, and I'll welcome you.